records management is a broad topic um, that has seen a lot of um, evolution on the SharePoint platform. I've been working um, pretty exclusively in the records management arena uh, for the past several years and I've developed a number of different approaches and methodologies that um, are all, uh, you know, the basic goal is to uh, maximize the ability to create practical solutions on the SharePoint platform. And as we go through the material, uh, you'll see that um, there's kind of a balance that we're trying to strike always between uh, pure theory and what we should be able to do and uh, where the platform is. And I'm sure you've all encountered the same as you've uh, gone through your uh, process. Um, the overall agenda here is fairly aggressive um, or, or let's say ambitious. <coughs> The first thing we need to do is, is get a sense for where records management is in the SharePoint um, uh, from a technology standpoint. Uh, what it is that uh, we have and what it is that we don't have in the SharePoint environment. But as you can see from the layout of the course agenda, I also want to touch on a couple of preliminary steps. Uh, the prime, primary one being content lifecycle modeling and what you can do to fill the gap between um, the information architecture, which is really not a technology uh, issue, and you know where do we start in order to begin modeling content in such a way that we can support a more traditional approach to file planning. Then we'll get into uh, a little bit deeper treatment of um, file planning strategies and the ones that um, are again that distinction between technology and and technique uh, we want to have strategies that are somewhat technology agnostic in the sense that maybe there's a portion of our content that needs to be regulated outside of SharePoint well, how do we deal with those scenarios even beyond the litigation hold scenario which is kind of a, uh, uh, a traditional um, scenario that, that spans technologies um, <clears throat> but if our goal is to be able to reapply our strategy then we need to back up a little bit from the technologies that SharePoint gives us and adopt a technology agnostic uh, file plan development strategy and that's kind of the focus of that section um, and then we'll move further into the, the specifics of um, classifying records, routing records, declaring them, um, setting up expiration um, formulas and policies, doing, uh, you know, understanding what disposition means in the SharePoint environment, and then we'll touch on uh, the kind of search and process, the litigation holds, e-discovery sections. Um, I've put at the bottom building a records repository. Um, you know, this actually bounced around between the, 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 the last and the second uh, module because we'll actually begin building the repository as we go along. Um, there'll be a number of different demos that I show, but because the records repository really depends on a number of the different other things being done in advance, we kind of have no choice but to build it piecemeal as we get through to the end. Um, so if I go into each of these sections a little bit more detail so you understand the goals of each. <laughs> For the first module that we'll get into, um, we want to quickly survey the different records management features that SharePoint provides. Um, equally important is to understand what it does not provide. And then a quick overview of some of the major challenges for, for records management in the SharePoint environment. And our real goal here is to, again, define those strategies that are broad enough so that we can achieve real-world regulatory compliance for any content that's based in SharePoint. Um, now that's a pretty broad statement, but uh, um, it should make sense as we go f further into that module. The other piece, the next module, is <coughs> focusing on this notion of content lifecycle modeling. Now I have my own perspective on what that means. Um, my goal with this module is to introduce you to some of the concepts that 
you can then use as a jumping off point for um, collecting all the information that you need to actually build a file plan that makes sense for SharePoint development. Um, the, you know, we, we're dealing kind of with a conglomeration of general terms, file plan being one of them. Uh, and so I've characterized this as a SharePoint file plan because there are just a lot of different tools and a lot of different approaches to building a file plan, a lot of different ideas about what file plan means. Here we're talking about gathering all the information that we needed in order to do the configuration that, we, that we're going to set up in the SharePoint environment for managing records. Um, and I've tried to keep away from a number of different third-party tools. Um, you may be aware, you may be using a lot of different tools that introduce their own notions of file plan. Here I'm trying to focus just on the information and I'm calling it a file plan and as you'll see there are a lot of different ways to skin that cat. Okay, So the idea here is that how do we fill that gap between uh, where we start as a records management professional in trying to set up those rules in preparation for configuring SharePoint so that the typical end users know what to do and the content flows in the right directions. Um, records that are declared end up in the right place. Users are not presented with too much information or they're not presented with a gap where they have to make up um, uh, their own ideas about how to declare records, etc. Ideally, the file plan should provide uh, enough information so that we can easily configure that. Okay, but there's not a lot of support given in SharePoint from a technology standpoint for how we translate our requirements into an actual working file plan. So the goal of this module is to, to look at that a little bit more closely. It's kind of a content analysis um, component um, that uh, I'll use to introduce a number of methodologies for gathering that information. Okay. The other part of that is to make sure that that methodology is consistent um, because there's a, there's a lot of different ways that we can use the information. Uh, and we'll, we'll get into that in more detail, but there's just a lot of different configuration options, all that are driven by that same body of information. And we'll have um, an actual demo where we'll look at the process of creating a content lifecycle model and some of the tools that I use to do that in my practice. From there, we'll move into more detailed um, strategic planning um, activities to really understand what are the core components that we need for uh, file planning in the SharePoint environment and the benefits of doing so. And we'll look a little bit at how we get from that content lifecycle modeling activity into the more uh, rigorous file planning activity. And then we'll continue our walkthrough to build an actual file plan using some of the tools that are available in SharePoint. Once we've got a start on the file planning process, we'll look more closely at the process of classifying and routing records. Okay. Um, this gets us more into the actual technology that SharePoint provides. So. There are specific tools that we have out of the box, and as much as possible, again, I'm trying to stick to the out-of-the-box um, tools. There are obviously some third-party tools that make this better, um, that handle the story better, and in fact, um, there are a number that I, that I could recommend using that do that. However, they are all also built on these core components. Um, ultimately, if they're going to deliver uh, any kind of record classification mechanism or routing mechanism on top of SharePoint is going to have to tie into uh, what SharePoint provides. Okay, And then we get to that linking component where we're actually associating incoming documents with the record types um, that have been identified in our file plan. And that's where we get into um, uh, record routing, uh, using the content organizer, and continuing our build out of our record center site by configuring uh, the content organizer. Next, there'll be um, uh, a separate focus on uh, record declaration. And 
I'll draw a distinction between implicit and explicit record declaration. You may have heard it uh, described differently as in-place records declaration and uh, repository-based. Um, I like to generalize it a little bit more and distinguish that record declaration activity as a distinct activity separate from what you do with the records after they've been declared. Um, and so I use these terms implicit versus explicit record declaration, which I think makes it more clear. Um, we'll focus on those different record declaration tools available today in SharePoint and um, give us a higher level roadmap um, to understand more precisely the relationships between these different activities and some of the um, hidden tools that SharePoint provides that allow you to adjust that relationship. Um, we'll look at hybrid record declaration scenarios as well. From the demo side, we'll actually go through and show uh, the record declaration process in SharePoint for the benefit of those who have not yet had a chance to uh, play with those tools. Um, and then we'll move on to uh, similarly looking at uh, setting up retention policies, understanding uh, how record uh, expiration and disposition works in the SharePoint environment, um, understanding uh, the difference and implications between uh, setting up retention policies on content types versus setting them up on locations like document libraries and we'll continue our build out to create retention policies within um, the SharePoint environment. Uh, another important area will be looking at e-discovery and understanding the changes that have been done in the latest version of SharePoint 2013 with the new eDiscovery site template. Um, it's called the eDiscovery Center and that's where we'll understand more about creating and applying litigation holes and seeing the evolution of uh, the whole concept of uh, litigation support and how that has evolved uh, from SharePoint 2010 to 2013. We'll go through the process of setting up a simple litigation hole so you'll see how all the pieces fit together um, and uh, see how to actually create that e-discovery site. And then again, as I mentioned at the outset, um, throughout the course, throughout the class, we'll be um, building out an actual records repository, um, pulling together all the different concepts uh, that are being introduced in the course, talk about some best practices for how you should go about setting up a records repository and um, looking at all those different pieces um, together. <laughs>